it's just like the situation with with what they've done to me. I mean, I mean, here I, I was running for sheriff for Republican for the Republican Party here, and I in, I was at Republican Party, ended up in jail, and we just had to hear in this past Thursday on the fifth. The jury, if it wasn't for the jury, between the judge and the state attorney's office, they wanted me in jail. The people stood up. One of the ladies said, listen, this is totally, un- this is unbelievable. And, I mean, right in the middle of the hearing. That's right. You I were an official about- candidate. It was in the news. You went there, and they said, you're not allowed to be here as a candidate. Arrest him. And they were trying to charge you with trespassing. They did, and they tried to put you in prison for it, but the jury found you not guilty. Exactly. That's why we parents want our right to a trial by jury. DCF and Department of Your Own Family will not give parents a right to a trial by jury. They come up with all these lies and false allegations, and when other people hear it, it's just totally insane. Well, I mean, and I've seen the cases uh, with the Alamo case. Uh, wasn't it that some parents spanked lightly one of their children, and, and that's why they're grabbing hundreds of people's children? Uh, I mean, let's talk about uh, some of the things that have happened in this case. Angela? Yes. Well, one of the things is, is they they did say that they had spanked their children. It was uh, parents, you know, spanking their children. Nothing. But there's no law like against that. There's no law, but they, but they still take children because it's not real courts. Right, but then they, they took children that had, had no accusations of being spanked whatsoever, but they took them, they said, because it was medical neglect, because they didn't have their shots, and educational neglect, because although the children had been going to private school with the ABECA curriculum and the children, when they tested them, they gave them the, when the DHS came and took them, they gave the children the PACE test and all the children ranked either good to superior. A lot of the children ranked superior. But, yet but let's still, understand the this. The, 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 the CPS was set up 90 years ago in the U.S., outside courts, they're not real courts, to carry out eugenics and forced sterilization. That's in my film Endgame. It's on record. The newsreels from the 20s and 30s is saying how great eugenics is. These aren't real courts. And I remember seeing some of the newscasts and other articles where they said they were taking the children for not having vaccines. When there's no law, you've got to take these deadly things. Exactly. Well, Please you know, continue. Alex, this, this is what I was going to say. When, when, I, when an animal's dead and a bird of prey comes upon it, the way they tell whether that, that carcass is dead or not is they pick at its eye. Whether it's, whether, whatever it is, it'll pick at the eye. And the Bible says the eye of a people is their children. And if America will allow them to come in and steal our children and start picking, a piece, picking our children to pieces, that means this nation is internally dead. That's right. This they're nation- mad that they couldn't abort all the children, so they're going to wreck them. And it's in their own, again, their own Department of Education. They want to wreck the family. Over 67% of the children in CPS clutches are on psychotropic drugs, folks. Yep. And, then the, and then they testify in the, te- in the state legislature in Texas that the children have bad gene pools and have to be all be put on drugs. Okay. Go ahead. Well, so what, 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 Alex, I want to thank you for being there because every time I've called, you have opened this, your, your program up in order for us to cry out as parents. I mean, I haven't seen my kids now for over a year. This has gone on for four years. For three years, we could only see them one hour a month. And if people were to go to the Alamo uh, Ministries dot com and look at, they put on their website the, the stipulations when they go to visit their kids, what they can and can't say. They can't whisper to their children. They can't. And this is what they're doing. They're isolating the parents from the children. And if they destroy our families, we have no nation. And there's if no due can... process. There's no nothing. And they're clearly targeting Christians. Everywhere, particularly, this is persecution. Continue with what's happened uh, with the children that go to this church. Well, I can put on uh, Alice Andrasek. She uh, was actually here when they came and they raided, and uh, they took her sister and five other children in the, the first time. And matter of fact, the judge bumped her from being able to visit her sister and her brother who were taken. And he said the only way she can uh, visit again is if she puts in a motion to where she's put under a gag order because they're obviously so worried about how she, what she has to say about how they're torturing and how her brother and sister don't want to be there and they want to come home. But I'm going to put her on because she can, of course, tell it better than I can. All right. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 
the day of the raid was September 20th um, in 2008. And um, uh, we, they, the kids were outside playing. It was a beautiful day. We have miniature ponies, and they were outside riding, riding the ponies and playing with the little Cocker Spaniel dog. And um, some of the girls were doing some, um, putting together some literature, gospel literature, in another section of the school and mission. And I was upstairs in the office um, answering the phones. And all of a sudden, all these people, like hundreds of uh, FBI, uh, BATF, um, the state police came swarming up our street, and um, they jumped over the fence. They were first they were banging on the fence outside, and um, that they freaked the people out that, outside. Um, they were saying, "Open the gate! Open the gate! Let us come in!" And one of the girls that was out there ran back to the adults and said, "Somebody's trying to break in. We don't know what's going on. Help us!" You know. And so then um, they, when they jumped over the fence and got into the backyard, um, instead of coming in the front door, which was total, totally unlocked, they came over to a sliding glass window. There's a sunroom, and it has sliding glass doors, and um, that's where I was. And then um, I saw them, and they were dressed in, in black from head to toe, and I didn't know who they were, and they had this huge machine. And I, I, the first thing I thought was maybe it was a Terminex company or something coming to, you know, come and terminate the, the termites or something because this huge machine they had. And then I looked over, and I saw FBI on their arm, and I realized it was a huge machine gun they had. And um, then they, I could hear them saying they couldn't see me because the windows were tinted. But I could hear them saying, this is the easiest way they said to get in. Come on, we've got to take down this door. And so at that point, I freaked out because the only thing I, I know about these people is I know what they did to the people in Waco. They killed them mercilessly. They had no trial. They had no right. to. They couldn't call the media. They couldn't call anybody. So I was terrified, and I jumped up, and I ran down to where the other girls were in the other part of the school and mission where they were putting the gospel literature together. And I told them, we have to get out of here now. Hurry. You know, there's somebody breaking in. Um, the FBI is here. They have machine guns. We've got to get out now. Yeah, they can surround things and burn it down again. Yeah, they love that. Exactly. There was helicopters flying overhead, two or three at least. Um, they came so low. Um, what? They had snipers. They had um, their medics there with their all their riot gear. They had the, um, the bulletproof vests. They had, um, you know, they were just dressed to the hilt for this um, combat against uh, three women and six children. That's who that they had. Okay, of and then now they've said in, not um, not vaccinating is the big crime, but you can't get a jury, you can't get a real court uh, because it's a eugenics court. Exactly. And so then um, we went, we tried to get out a back gate on the property, and when we opened the gate, uh, somebody was already there. Of course, they already had us surrounded, and they told us to go back in, that it was just a, um, a police safety check, and they told us we had to go back inside the house or the school and mission. And so we went back inside, and I tried to have, I had a cell phone, but it was dead, and I was trying to call somebody to tell them, please help us. You know, we're stuck over here. We don't know what's going on. We're surrounded. They have these guns, and, you know, for all we knew, we were going to be killed any minute. And so um, then as we were going back up to the main part of the school and mission or the office, um, three people, three FBI agents came down there and they had their laser lights pointed at our hearts. It was me and three other girls. Well, they um, feed the off that terror. Like they ranging they, they, from like 16 to 17. Yeah, they feed off the power. Anyways, yes, go ahead. exactly. And we, we had no idea. I thought they were going to shoot us. So they, they were pointing the them at, lights, uh, you know, they were the pointing target, the guns at, you know, so ma'am, exactly ma'am, 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 ma'am. They, they were pointing it at children's uh, at, at, at children? And um, then they told us, you know, put your hands in the air. Stop where you are. Don't, you know, everyone stand still. And uh, so we froze there and we're, we're like, can we turn on the light? Because we had some of the windows open. So you, it, there was sunlight, but the actual light wasn't on. And they're like, no, stay where you are. And then they come down there with their guns still pointed at us. And they told us to come over. And I said, why do you have to point those guns at us? You know, we're just girls. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? We don't have any weapons. And they said, you don't have any weapons? And we said, no, we don't have any weapons. We've, I've never even seen a gun before, except for the one you're pointing at me. And um, so he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry, miss, but um, we just have to do this, you know, because we're, we got to check for um, papers and evidence of stuff we've had. Did they point about, the guns, um, ma'am, ma'am, so ma'am, put her on hold, put her on hold, we're going to have to put her on hold, 
Uh, you know, I, again, Greg Pound calls up every week, and he's got new stories, new information to cover. I didn't know that this was the subject. There's no way to do it in just 20 minutes. So I'm going to have to have these ladies and Greg Pound up later in the week or next week to do a full hour or perhaps uh, longer with them on this because I would have pulled up all my news articles about this because I'm aware of this case and we've been able to cover it. He specifically was going to come on dealing, he said, with vaccinations. And, 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 and that's the big issue here is that all of this tyranny is wrong, all of this tyranny is bad. But specifically, I remember in this case... There's so many. When he brought it up, I, I do remember that they're bringing up no vaccinations. Well, that's not a law. But but uh, I remember six months ago when the California court said parents aren't the parents, the state owns the children, and that we say you will not be homeschooled, banning homeschooling. Now, that got overturned. But that shows the attitude and the mindset. And they pick out these religious groups. 